Hi, we are uh, Disorientation from Montreal. My name is uh, Mariko Fleury. I do vocals, I play oboe and English horn, and I do the drum programming for the band. Hi, my name is Daniel Darius. I play bass and guitars for the band, and I did some back vocal once on our first EP, but I'm not a vocalist. So, first question, what is the meaning behind the, main, the band's name? Uh, disorientation, when it popped into my mind, I thought it was a very appropriate name because there is no uh, metal substyle that is attached to it. You can't say, oh, it's definitely black metal or death metal or folk metal or whatever. I thought it fitted the band perfectly because there is an abstract quality to it and not many bands, even no band has picked that name for themselves. So for me, it's an obvious choice for a band name. Yeah. I love the fact that it sounds like something is wrong. Uh, so for for me it's a perfect name. It it, it sounds dissonant. I don't know. It it sounds weird. Uh, so next question. And uh, can you tell a little bit about survival mode? Survival mode is our second EP. It will be released on December first, two thousand twenty-three. Uh, it has three songs, uh, just like our last EP. But the songs on survival mode are faster and they need a crisper production <clears throat> and it's about the same length as our first effort yeah, it's, it's a bit it's more extreme than the previous ep which started slower like early black sabbath maybe if i have to give an example but the new one is definitely an extreme release uh, next question. Uh, can you talk about the lyrics on this release? Uh, the lyrics are about various uh, survival tactics. It's called survival mode. It's what you do to uh, be able to go through a bad situation. Uh, each song has a different aspect of it. Like the first song is called Dissociation. It's about uh, detaching yourself from uh, certain circumstances and like not being present in a situation that you don't like. The second song, uh, Jaded, is about uh, forcing yourself to uh, eliminate all emotions that you can feel, like uh, deadening yourself, becoming insensitive. And the third song, Dark Side, is about, uh, it's about questioning uh, the motivations behind uh, the people who want to help you, who see that uh, whether you're dissociating or uh, deadening yourself, who say, oh, uh, why do you do this? It's not right. Uh, we want to help you. But why do they want to help you? It's the question that uh, you ask yourself. And those uh, three songs are uh, three uh, different tactics of survival. Uh, the next question is about the lyrics. You already uh, told everything, so this one is done. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the EP cover art? Oh, the EP cover art is a uh, very uh, metaphorical. Uh, I have depicted uh, self harm because it's uh, it's something that you do to cope with the bad situation. I have done a hand drawing of it and it's a, a we can see it here. Uh, 
and uh, just like the first EP I've done the drawing by hand uh, because I like uh, the organic feel of pen and paper uh, and when I did the drawing, I scanned it and I did a little bit of uh, color tweaking on the computer to optimize uh, the, the image for computer viewing. Read the next one, please. <laughs> Cause... Oh, um, <sighs> okay. Uh, you recall your very first show that you did in a fast food restaurant? Yeah, in the early 2000s with a band called Dying Down. Yeah, that's, I don't know what to say. Like we had the opportunity to play in a fast food restaurant. I think it's called uh, Gorky, something like that. I don't even remember when it, where it is. It's at Montreal, but it was raining and nobody showed up. Almost nobody. You were there. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> you were there. My parents were there. The band members were there. Uh, the cook was there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had to build a little stage. Uh, and oh, my God, it was terrible. But at least uh, my, very, my, my real first gig... Well, our, uh, I mean, the, the same band. We had a very uh, a real gig after that, and it well, it went very well because of that previous shitty one. So, yeah, that's, learning experiences. Yeah. Uh, so next next question. Da, 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 da. What do you do to support yourself financially? Oh, hmm. I'm a coordinator in an office. I work full time and I also do a lot of music. I'm also a member of the Growlers Choir. So um, when I'm not doing music or when I'm not working, well, I'm sleeping or doing the grocery. Uh, I don't have an official job, let's say, but I, I do uh, record bass for other artists. I'm a session, a uh, part-time session, I will say. And, but for the, for the way we, we do what we do musically, we, we find ways, like very cheaper ways to achieve uh, what, what we've done so far. So if you listen carefully to our music, you can tell it's not a big production and it's, it's by choice, not just for financial uh, reasons. And we like to sound uh, DIY. We, we like to sound like nobody else. At least we try to. So uh, next one. What did you first discover your interest in metal music? Uh. When I was a teenager, I guess most people discover their interest in metal when they're in their teens. I started listening to metal with the, the thrash metal bands of that era, like uh, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, Megadeth, The Testament, mm -hmm. Overkill. And then I discovered Florida Death Metal, and it took it a notch higher was more intense, more extreme, uh, deeper vocals. Uh, I was very much into it. And uh, you know, so far I haven't uh, quit metal. Even if I get older, I still enjoy it. Uh, in my case, when I was 10 years old, uh, the Black Album came out and because of the, the, the popularity of the band, I knew nothing about them. So. I went to the, the music store and I just asked for Metallica, nothing more. So the guy gave me a black cassette. Uh, mm. So I listened to it. I expected something faster, but it was very, very good. I'm not, I'm not part of the people who hate this album. I think it's, uh, it's a very, very, very deep album. Very good, very uh, epic. It's a masterpiece. And after that, 
many years after that, maybe in the late 90s, I, I started to be interested in the more extreme metal, like uh, Cryptopsy, Cannibal Corpse, DSI. It took me some time, but it, it worth the effort to, to give many chances until you can listen to it like it's normal. So the, the, the boundaries or the, the barrier are very far away, like behind you, and you have almost no limit when it comes to uh, listen to music, but mostly to create. Because you don't realize how people will feel about what you play. For, for us, it's just normal because it comes from us. But some people, especially people who don't play an instrument, a lot will will happen in their head, and they'll sometimes they'll be very impressed or just very disgusted. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, uh, next question: da, 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 da. What obstacle have you faced as a musician, and how do uh, how did you overcome them? Uh, well, the biggest obstacle for me has been uh, the lack of time because uh, with all the music I would want to do, uh, I would have to uh, spend uh, all my time on it. Uh, that means uh, not having a job anymore, but obviously I cannot do that. So what I do, I try to uh, discipline myself and say, okay, well, I going to work on my music at that very precise moment and uh, no excuse and uh, you know do the hard work the practicing and sometimes it means uh, rewriting a song a few times just to see what would fit better and you know if I feel that something is not right then I'm going to uh, start over again and until I, I find the right way to express something. In my case, the obstacle war, not anymore, but it was money for so many years, for decades, uh, <clears throat> lack of money, <laughs> unfortunately, but it, it, force, it forces you to, to find other ways to achieve uh, your goal and that's something that money can't buy. I know it sounds cliche, but it's the truth. I mean, you have to find a way and sometimes you make awesome discoveries because of that. But that's all. I think I think money was the only obstacle for me so far because, uh, I mean, I don't care what people think most of the time sometimes it, it hurts but most of the times i'll do what i want anyway so uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. is there a specific non-metal uh, genre or artist you would love to collaborate with i can't think of anybody right now at the moment for me in my case, I love so many music styles, but if by some miracle Depeche Mode decided to reach me and because they need a bass player, I will do it a thousand percent because I love them. <laughs> <laughs> they, for, for me, they're the best pop electro band ever. Uh, next question. Da -da -da -da. How do you perceive the evolution of the heavy music genre over the years? Well, it has split it over many subgenres, and I credit that to the cheap sound cards that can be bought. So if you uh, buy a sound card and uh, get a recording software, then you can record your own ideas. And you can uh, you can put them online, uh, which was not possible in the nineties. Uh, I think that's a that's why there are so many uh, different approaches out there, because uh, back in the day, then you had to 
be uh, under a label to publish music now you can bypass the label mm. and even if your music is so out there then you put it yourself online and some people will get into it um about the ev evolution of metal now since many years the the production the sound in general is how can i say that it, it became so perfect sometimes i believe it works like meshuga fear factory bands that need to sound perfect and it's awesome but when in, in my opinion when too many bands sound too perfect it sounds sometimes like it's not human being who are playing sometimes you you see a recording session you see the drummer play and it sounds like a machine for me it's just weird because the the how can i say that the, i feel like the recording process now is almost the same every time for most of the bands and that's something I love about us. We do it our way, our own way. So it sounds very raw and that's our goal. So not much people sound like us. We don't use fancy equipment. Uh, we don't use a, a real recording room. We don't. We record in the worst uh, situation by choice mostly sometimes we record and we don't record directly in the computer we use amp small amps and sometimes during uh, other bands rehearsal around the room and it works <laughs> so mm. when you don't have much money just try just try and you to discover some miracle ways <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay there is a few extra questions before uh, before we we stop uh, if you had to choose between guitar shredding or drum blast beats uh, well good question I can't decide I want both uh, yeah both both because it, it both, depends both. The, the situation and like anything else, if it's too much, nah, it's not surprising anymore. So mm. even if, even Envy Momstein has some uh, very simple moments, and so mm. if you shred all the time, it in my opinion it will become boring. If you blast all the time, it will become boring if you listen to um, uh, the spice icon for example the drummer uh, alex pelty he's amazing that guy is able to blast all the time but he decide not to he puts a lot of groove so when the blast beat appears it's so fun so it's a difference so uh next question vinyl or a cd Okay. Well, for me, it's CD. I like I like both, but when you're very lazy, like sometimes I ha I am, you have to stand up to flip the vinyl. So, uh, so <laughs> the the CD just plays by itself. Hmm. I don't know. I like both. I I suck when I have to choose because I I love so many things. Uh, mosh pit or crowd surfing? Uh, mosh pit. I like both. Uh, both at the same time, but you have to be very, very careful. And I'm part of the people who hate people who punches in the crowd. In my opinion, that's the dumbest thing ever. Sorry if I offend you, I don't care. Uh, next question. 12 a.m. studio session or 6 a.m. rehearsal? Uh, 12 a.m. studio. Yeah, same for me. I like both, but I'm the biggest uh, studio recording uh, horror. I love it so much. I will record every day of my life. So. Yeah, when we recorded the bass for survival mode, we started recording at 7 a.m. Yeah. 
without any breakfast. It was very suffering, but it's my fault. And it was so hot. It was during winter, uh, not winter, summer, sorry. I speak French. And uh, <laughs> it was so hot in the room. Uh, it, it was not, not impossible to record, but it was very, very, very hard. And because of that, I put a lot of heart, not just technique. Think about it. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure song? That is not metal, uh, of course. Oh. Oh. I like the Jingle Cats. <laughs> well, we're the holidays, so that's the first thing that came to my yeah. mind. You know, the cats singing. Meow, 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 uh, meow. Uh, we should cover that song someday, maybe. <laughs> In my case, I could, I took, I mean, I love the 80s so much, even if everybody uh, used to smoke cigarettes everywhere. Uh, but I know I have to pick only one song, I guess. So, Never Let Me Down from the Page Mode. That song is the best example that perfection does exist in the good way. So. All right, so it's been a pleasure yep. uh, showcasing the band to Antichrist Mag. And uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to present our music to a wider public. And uh, we really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, guys and girls. <laughs>